Lesson 3.6D, Using Rational Numbers in Any Form. We've solved problems using integers, positive and negative fractions, and positive and negative decimals. A single problem may involve rational numbers in two or more of these forms. To solve these problems, we'll need to convert fractions to decimals or decimals to fractions. So we're going to do a quick review of converting a fraction to a decimal. We know a fraction is like a division problem. It's 1 divided by 8. So 8 is the divisor on the outside. The 1 is going to be on the inside. And we use the numerator as the dividend, the denominator as the divisor. And we write as many zeros to the right side that are necessary to have a remainder of 0. So we've got a decimal point after the 1, and I needed to add three zeros. We get 125 thousandths for 1 eighth. For converting a decimal to a fraction, if we have 45 hundredths, we just write the 45 over 100. And we find the greatest common factor for 45 and 100, which is 5, and divide the numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor, that GCF. We get 9 twentieths. If we have 125 thousandths, that's the thousands place, we write it over a thousand, and we find the greatest common factor for 125 and 1,000, which is 125, and we divide the numerator and denominator by that GCF. We get 1 eighth. Here we have 25 hundredths. Again, we write it over 100, and the greatest common factor for the numerator and denominator is 25. We get 1 fourth. So we could do a tenth and write it over a 10 and so on. We make a list of the factors. So we have 1 times 25 and 5 times 5. So these are the factors of 25. We use the greatest. And the factors for 100 are 1 times 100, 2 times 50, 4 times 25, 5 times 20, and 10 times 10. And the greatest one they have in common is 25, so that's what we divide it by to get the fraction in its lowest form. I have a cinnamon honey butter recipe, and my cinnamon honey butter recipe calls for 1 and 1 fourth cups of softened butter for each batch. If I have 4 pounds of butter, that costs $12.78, and it contains eight cups in that four pounds, how many full batches of the recipe can I make if I use all of the butter? And what's the cost of the butter per batch? The first thing we do is find the number of one and one-fourth cup batches that I can make. So we're going to do eight cups, because that's what's in four pounds, divided by one and one-fourth. This is a whole number eight. It'll be easier to do the division if I change this to a 1.25 so we can use long division. It's got a decimal point here, so we need to hop it over two times to the right, which means this decimal point will need to be hopped over two points to the right, and it'll go directly above. We do our long division and get six and four tenths. Now it's telling us how many full batches can we make. So I can make six full batches because the four-tenths won't count. So just remember, when you're doing this with the decimals, you've got to hop the divisor and the dividend the same number of hops and add some zeros as placeholders. We also needed to find the cost of butter per batch. It told us that it was $12.78 for that four pounds of butter, that eight cups, we know we can do six full batches, so we're going to divide the $12.78 by 6. And 6 fits into 12 two times. 6 times 2 is 12. We subtract it as 0. It's the 7's turn to come down. 6 fits into 7 one time. 6 times 1 is 6. We subtract it, get a 1. Now it's this 8's turn to come down. And 6 fits into 18 three times. We get $2.13 for the butter for each batch of the cinnamon honey butter recipe. We can justify our answer of six full batches at $2.13 each. It was given that there were four pounds of butter that contains eight cups. We need one and one-fourth cup butter per batch. 
which is about one cup. We have six batches times about one cup would be six cups of butter. And there's enough left over for the one-fourths. We need six one-fourths, don't we? So there's enough left over between the six cups and eight cups for those little fractional parts. And it was given that four pounds of butter cost $12.78, which is about $13. And $13 divided by six batches is about $2 each batch. The answers are close to the estimates, so our answer is reasonable. A half-gallon container of ice cream contains 16 one-half cup servings and costs $4.75. If an ice cream cone holds three-fourths cups of ice cream, how many cones can we make? And what's the cost for each cone? So the first thing we do is, it says the half-gallon container holds 16 one-half cup servings. So we do 16 times 1 half, that's 16 halves, that's 8 cups of ice cream. We know that a cone can hold 3 fourths cup of ice cream, so now we're going to take the 8 cups and divide it by 3 fourths. We can change the 3 fourths to a 75 hundredths and do the long division. We have a decimal point, so we're going to move it over two times. That means the decimal point after the 8 needs to be moved over, and we need some zeros as placeholders. We find that it's 10.6666. It continues. So actually, we can just write the 6 with a bar over the top of it like that to show that the 6 repeats. It's a repeating decimal. We don't want to fill part of a cone. We want full cones, don't we? So that means we can do 10 full cones. We have $4.75 for the cost of that half gallon. We know we can get 10 full cones. When we do the division, we get 0 0.475 for each cone. And because this is money, the 5 tells the 7 to round up. We're going to have 48 cents for each cone. Be careful of fraction or decimal answers of objects that can't be divided, such as people, animals, or anything that must be whole. If we have a ski lift chair that can carry two people, how many chairs are needed for 17 people? Well, there's no such thing as half of a ski lift chair. If there's 17 people and two people fit in each chair, that's eight and a half chairs. They're going to have to have nine ski lift chairs, and someone will need to sit alone. We'll need to round up to the next whole number. There's no such thing as half of a ski lift chair. So remember, if we have division with a fraction and a decimal, or even multiplication, we need to convert them to the same form. If we have a whole number and a mixed number, we can use long division by converting this mixed number to a decimal and then using long division. We can also divide the fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. We do, we turn this mixed number into a fraction greater than one, an improper fraction, so it would be five-fourths. Remember, we do one times four is four, and we add the numerator, that's five, and then we use that denominator, so we have five-fourths. We flip it around to its reciprocal of four-fifths, and then we just multiply straight across. We get 32 fifths, which simplifies to 6 and 2 fifths. If you'd like to try making a small batch of my cinnamon honey butter recipe, use half cup of softened, that means room temperature butter. You don't want it melted. You don't want to melt it in the microwave. You just want it room temperature, so it's kind of mushy. Use a half cup and then a fourth teaspoon of cinnamon and two tablespoons of honey. You use a wire whisk or an electric mixer to blend it thoroughly. You can put it in a little container, keep it in the refrigerator. You can spread it on toast or muffins or bagels. It's really delicious. I bet you could even put it on pancakes or French toast. We're finished with part D. We're moving on to the last part of 3.6 using math tools strategically. I hope the rest of your day is really great, and I hope you join me for the last part of the lesson.
Bye.